volumetric analysis. In this experiment, you will be performing one of the fundamental experimental procedures in chemistry, volumetric analysis or titrations. Titrations involve using a solution of a known concentration combined with an indicator in order to find the concentration of an unknown solution. The titrations are used to produce precise, accurate data and results. The definitions of precision and accuracy are as follows. Precision is the reproducibility of a measurement. It is also the average deviation of a set of measurements. Accuracy is how close the measurement is to the true value. If we think of precision and accuracy in terms of throwing darts, the difference between the two become clear. For example, this set of throws would have low precision and low accuracy since the throws are all over the place and nowhere near the bullseye. In terms of titrations, this trial set would show low precision and low accuracy as there is a large deviation between the titers and the average is nowhere near the true value. In this example, the set of throws are all over the place showing low precision, yet they have a high accuracy because all of them average to the bullseye. In terms of titrations, this set of trials would show low precision as there is a large deviation among the titers. However, it shows high accuracy as the average is very close to the true value. In this example, the set of throws shows high precision but a low accuracy as they are all close to one another but nowhere near the bullseye. In terms of titrations, these titers are very precise, having low deviation among them. However, they show low accuracy since there is nowhere near the true value. This last example demonstrates what you strive for in the game of darts. All of the throws are very close together and very close to the bullseye, meaning the player has high precision and high accuracy. This is what you should strive for in titrations. This set of trials shows high precision and high accuracy since the titers have very little deviation and the average is very close to the true value. During titrations, you will be mainly using volumetric glassware. All volumetric glassware measures to four significant figures. Examples of volumetric glassware are burettes, volumetric pipettes, more pipettes, and volumetric flasks. Here are some definitions in case you are not familiar with titrations. A titration is where an aqueous substance is analyzed by reacting it with a known aqueous substance. A titrant is the substance being dispensed from the burette. The equivalence point is when chemically equivalent amounts of reactants are present, and the end point is when the indicator changes color. This is the main thing that you will be looking for during a titration. In this experiment, you will be dealing with primary and secondary standards. A primary standard is a substance available in high purity that can be accurately measured. All of the relevant properties of this prepared solution are known. In this experiment, potassium hydrogen phthalate, KHP, is the primary standard. A secondary standard is a solution that has been titrated against or standardized using the primary standard. You will be using KHP primary standard to analyze sodium hydroxide, the secondary standard. In order to prepare your secondary standard of 500 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, you'll need to determine how much solid sodium hydroxide you must use. By multiplying the concentration wanted by the liters of solution needed, then multiplying by the molar mass of the sodium hydroxide, you will know that you need exactly approximately 2 grams of sodium hydroxide. Exactly approximately means that you must have 2 grams, but you must know exactly how much you have. You do this by weighing around 2 grams of sodium hydroxide in the analytical balance. You will then use your primary standard, KHP, to calculate the exact concentration of your prepared sodium hydroxide solution. KHP and sodium hydroxide have a 1 to 1 molar ratio in this reaction, which makes your calculation simple. 
Since you know the mass of the KHP used, the molar mass of KHP, the volume of sodium hydroxide titrated, and the balance equation, you can determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide and your necessary standard. First, you can calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide by dividing the mass of KHP used by the molar mass of KHP and multiplying by the molar ratio from the balance equation. In this case, it is 1 to 1. Next, you can calculate the concentration of your sodium hydroxide solution by dividing the moles of sodium hydroxide by the volume in liters of sodium hydroxide you titrated. When you complete all of your calculations, be sure to include all these so you can see how they will cancel out. Now you are ready to determine the acidity of the white cranberry cocktail. Why do you think you aren't using red cranberry cocktail? Think about the indicator you will be using and what color it turns. This is the balance equation between the acid in the cranberry juice and your sodium hydroxide standard. So what do we know? You know the exact concentration of your sodium hydroxide secondary standard as well as the volume of sodium hydroxide titrated. You also know the volume of cranberry cocktail in the Erlenmeyer flask as well as the balance equation for this reaction. You can calculate the moles of hydrogen on a cranberry cocktail solution by multiplying the volume of sodium hydroxide in liters by the concentration of sodium hydroxide, then multiplying by the molar ratio in the balance equation, which is 1 to 1. To determine the concentration of hydrogen ions, you divide the moles of hydrogen ions by the volume in liters of cranberry cocktail that was pipetted. The concentration of hydrogen ions in solution is the acidity of the cranberry cocktail. Remember before you begin, you must clean your pipettes and burette three times with hot tap water and three times with deionized water and three times with the solution being used. After you are finished, rinse three times with hot water, three times with deionized water to clean it. Make sure you label your glassware the solutions you are using look very similar and you don't want to mix any of them up. I hope you enjoy completing the volumetric analysis experiment.